before the wedding. But this is one of my favourite stories, and this is about how Dimakul became leader of the Fiend in the first place. So here we go. Once upon a time, there was a young man called Dimakul. And Fiona was a very extraordinary young man because he had a very extraordinary upbringing. He spent all of his childhood with a druid woman out in the forest. Her name was Bobble. And Bobble uh, ta- taught Dimakul how to uh, uh, hunt and fish and run and catch and swim and all the things he needed to know about living out in the wild. But uh, she also taught him the ways of warfare. She taught him how to wield a sword, how to use a shield, how to throw a spear, all the things he needed to know about being a great warrior. And of all these skills, he was very well accomplished, even more so than men twice his age. And he had eaten of the salmon of knowledge, which, which we mentioned earlier, which meant that all the knowledge of the world was inside his head. So he was a very uh, knowledgeable and wise young man. And of all these skills, as I said, he was learning all these skills because he wanted to fulfill his destiny. And his destiny was to become leader of the Fina, as his father had been before him. Now, his father had been murdered by some guys called the Sons of Morna, and they usurped his position as leader of the Fina. But Fiumacul saw this as his birthright, um, and he wanted to fulfill his destiny. He wanted to avenge his father's death by becoming, reclaiming the leadership of the Fina. So, he had all the huntsmen skills today. He had all the warrior skills down, and he was a very wise and knowledgeable young man as well. So he saw this as his perfect opportunity to seize his time. Um, and it was actually around Seven Time, Seven Eve, uh, which is now known as Halloween, but it was a big uh, festival in the Celtic calendar. And every Seven Eve, the High King of Ireland, a guy called Cun of the Hundred Battles, would hold a great feast in the Great Hall of Tower, uh, about an hour away from here in County Meath. Um, and he would invite all the lords and chieftains and nobles and the Fina, they'd all come to the Great Hall of Tower for this feast at Seven And uh, they're all uh, there, and John saw this as perfect opportunity, he didn't crash the party. But he stood in the shadows, uh, hidden, and he watched the feast go on ahead of him, uh, and there was drinking and dancing and laughing and singing and music, they were all having great crack! Um, and John saw it all in front of his eyes. But, as it got closer to 12 o'clock, a kind of hush or a lull came on the congregation, and people started getting very anxious. And Colonel of the Hundred Battles, the High King of Ireland himself, was getting very frustrated. And this is the reason why. Because it had been, for every 20, or for the 20 years previous to this, at every Seventh Eve, there had been a curse place in Tara. That a goblin beast called Alan would come from the local fairy forest, uh, and he would descend upon Tara. And then he played beautiful goblin fairy music that would send everybody into a deep sleep. And when everybody was in a deep sleep, he would take in a deep breath, and he would blow flames and fire all over the goblin, or all over the town of the tower, and he would burn the place to the ground. And this happened every year at Sarah's Eve, and everybody was helpless to stop it. For the minute they heard the fairy music, there was nothing that they could do. So there was one of the hundred battles, getting very frustrated, not knowing what to do. So much so, he stood up in the middle of the hall, and he said, Well, nobody rid me of this goblin beast, Alan. But everybody remained silent for the new. The minute they heard the fairy music, there was nothing you could do. But still McCool, not really knowing any better, he stood out in the shadows, he stood in the middle of the hall, he said, I will rid you of the Scotland and be silent. Well, the of the hundred battles was taken back, the heads turned all over the, uh, the great hall of Tarago, he used to have his And Colonel of the hundred battles said, Well, who are you, my young brave fellow? And Phil said, I am Phil, son of Cool, and I'm here to offer myself to your services. Well, Colonel of the hundred battles was very impressed. He's like, well, I used to be friends with your father. Um, I'm so impressed with you, uh, my young lad, for showing such bravery and courage. I will offer you anything your heart desires if you complete this task. So off John went. He went outside to the ramparts of the fortress. He patrolled the perimeter to make sure everything was secure. There was no other enemies around. And then he waited. And true enough, coming to 12 o'clock, the most beautiful, eerie fairy music floated across the fields and hills towards the tower. And the minute it fell upon the ears of anybody that heard it, their eyelids, eyelids started to droop and started going into a very deep sleep. But Sion Kuhl mustered all the strength and courage he could from within, and he came up with a, a, a fantastic idea. He grabbed the spear that was by his side and pressed the point of the spear into his forehead, letting the pressure and the pain of the spear keeping him awake while everybody inside the great hall fell into a deep slumber. And John there sat there with this pressure of pain into his forehead, using all the strength that he could muster to keep himself awake. And after a few minutes passed, 
in the distance, you can see the great couple of these islands floating across the fields because he'd know that. And Fionn McClough must have been one of the first people to see him uh, because he had always, always had people asleep with his fairy music. And he was grotesque, there was hair all over his body, his horns, and his teeth, and tusks, and the smell of them. Ugh. But anyway, he was spooking across the fields and uh, playing his fairy harp. And Fionn let him come close enough just to bed the time when he was about taking a deep breath to blow fire and flames all over the great town and the tower. Fionn sees his chance. He whipped the spear from his forehead and threw it at such a force across the field that it was a goblin piece of metal and it the other side. And the goblin fell dead and the ground dead. Yeah. And just to make sure, Fionn ran up and chopped off his head with his lance. He ran back in to the great banqueting hall of Tower, and he stood in the middle of the hall, where everybody was still asleep, and he said, Behold, the head of the goblin beast Alan. And with that, everybody woke up to see the young Fionn howling the head of the goblin beast. And when they saw the sight, they all rejoiced and clapped and cheered and screamed, and they were in great form. They were having, uh, and even when Connor of the Hundred Battle saw Fionn, and he said, Well, my young boy, for showing such great, great courage and skill, I will now grant you any, uh, any, anything that your heart desires. Well, Fionn didn't even have to think about it. He said, I wish for the leadership of Fina, much like my father had been before me. I could have gone back and said, if that's what your heart desires, then so it shall be. And on that day, everybody, all the rest of Fina had to swear allegiance to Fionn McCool, and he became leader of Fina. And they went on to do many great deeds, and many great battles, and many more stories have been told about them in the past. So guys, that's the end of my story today. Thanks for listening to me, Crack It If you'd like to